Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over recursion with vectors. So we're going to go over how to traverse through a vector using recursion. And in my previous videos, we went over recursion by explaining how to create a recursive function to calculate the factorial of a number. And in another video, we also went over some practice problems for functions. One of those problems that we did was how to create a vector search function that will take in a vector and an element and it will return true if the element is in the vector. Otherwise, it returns false. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to search for an element in a vector. But this time, instead of using iteration with a for loop, we will be using recursion. So here we have two vectors, which I'll use for testing our solution. And then here we have some print statements where we call our function. So I'm going to create another function and I'm going to create a template just like with the previous function. And this is going to have type name T and type name U. And if you are not familiar with templates, I suggest you watch the video on templates and generics that I've created and I'll link in the video description. But basically this allows us to reuse this function for different types. So here we can see I have a vector of strings and a vector of ints. Okay, so this is going to return a Boolean and we'll call it vector search R and I'm going to pass in a const vector T and we'll pass in by reference. We'll call this parameter vec and we need to pass in the element that we want to search for. So the first thing we need in a recursive function is a base case. So let's look at this for loop. Basically, when should this function end? Well, we either find the element or we look through the entire vector and we haven't found the element, then we return false. So in this case, I'm iterating through the indices of the vector. So I'm going to check to see if we've made it to the end of the vector. Now, a recursive function is a function that calls itself. So we need something called a recursive step. Basically, we need to pass in a parameter that moves towards the base case. So here, I'm going to pass in an integer index and I'm going to assign this a default value of zero so that the user does not have to pass in this parameter. Instead, we can just initialize it to zero. So over here, I'm going to write the base case. If index is equal to vec.size, this means we've searched through the entire vector, I'm going to return false. Otherwise, I'm going to make a check to see if the value at the current index is equal to the value that we're looking for. Now, there are two ways to do this. The first way I'm going to show you is without the early exit. So early exit basically means that if I'm searching through this vector for the element and I found it at an index before reaching the end, I'm just going to return true. So this is an early exit because when we return from a function, we end the function. So if I return true here, that means I won't have to look through the rest of the vector. So for instance, if I'm looking for the value London in this city's vector, it is at index one. So if I check the zeroth index, I don't see it. Then I check the first index, I find it, then I return true. So there's no need for me to continue the search. So the first example, I will show you how to do it without this early exit. So basically, even if we find this value, we're still going to search through the rest of the vector. So I'm going to return vec at index is equal to element. And I'm going to chain this with or. So this Boolean is going to return true or false. And I'm going to chain it with the next recursive call. So this is going to be vector search r. And I'm going to pass in vector element and index plus one. So basically, this is going to return a chain of OR operators. So this is similar to the factorial function that we did. So let's go over this example. So if I start at index zero, we have New York, and I'm looking for London, this is going to return false, vector search R at index one. Okay, so I'm not going to write out all this, I'm just going to write the index number. And when we call this, it's going to look for London and at index one, we have London. So this will be true or vector search R at index two. And then we have Paris. So this is going to be false or vector search R at index three. And this is Rome. So this is going to be false or vector search R at index four and so on. So at the very end, we are going to have 
something like this. So after Rome, we'll have Madrid, which is false. And then we have Rome again, which is false. And then we hit this base case. So when we hit this base case, it's just going to flat out return false. And the idea here is we are returning a chain of or statements. So as long as there's one true in this chain, that means this whole thing evaluates to true. So let's go over our examples here. If I'm looking for London in the cities vector, we have true. If I'm looking for Lisbon, this will be false because Lisbon is not in this vector. And for the numbers vector, if I'm looking for one, we have true. And if I'm looking for 75, we'll have false because 75 is not in this vector. So currently I have vector search being called. So this is going to call our function over here that we created in the previous videos. So I'm going to save and run the program just to show you what the result is. And you can see we get one for London, which is true, zero for Lisbon, which is false, one for one in numbers, which is true, and zero for 75 in numbers, which is false, okay? Now I'm going to change this to vector search R. Okay, so now if I save and run the program, you can see we get the same exact results. And the way this works is we are chaining these booleans together with the OR operator. So this way of doing it is very similar to how we created the factorial function using recursion. Basically, we are chaining the multiplication operator. Now, there is a better way to do this, and this is with the early exit. So after we've checked to see if the index is equal to vector.size, if we haven't reached the end of the vector, we will not return false. So this means that we are still searching for the value. So here I'm going to do if vec of index is equal to element, in this case, I will return true. Otherwise, I will return the recursive call. So return vector search r vec element and index plus one. So how does this work? Let's go over this example again. So let's say I'm searching for Madrid, okay? So I'm calling this recursive function. So we're at index zero, so we don't hit this code. And at index zero, we have New York, and this is not going to hit this code. So we are going to return the result from our next recursive call. So we're going to pass in index one this time. So we're going to make the check for London. And again, it's not going to reach either of these conditions. So we return the next recursive call, which is Paris, and then Rome, and then Madrid, at which point we return true. So at index four, we find Madrid. And what we need to do now is pass this return true value back to index zero, which is the first recursive call. So we pass true back to the function call from index three. This passes the true back to the function call from index two. And this passes it back to the function call from index one. And this passes it back to index zero. Now, if I'm looking for Lisbon, on the other hand, then Lisbon is not going to be in this vector. So we'll hit the base case here and we return false. And basically, we're going to return false back to this recursive call. And that is going to return it back to here, and then here, here, and then here. And then finally, we return it here. Okay? So basically, the idea here is we are just passing the Boolean back to the previous recursive call. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get the same results. Okay? So this is how you can write a recursive function to search through a vector for a specific element. And here we are doing it with an early exit. So technically we have two base cases here because the base case is the final return without the recursive call. So here we have the recursive call and here we have one base case for true and the other for false. All right, so that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. And if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ tutorials like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.